I think that uh, this government needs a renewed public mandate. That means early elections. Elections. We need early elections. For need, which the constitutional decision we, is needed. That's right. And the numbers are not there. Right, right. Uh, so that's how we see it. And we need to do that urgently. And then afterwards, they need to refocus on things that matter to people. That is uh, the rule of law reforms, the fight against corruption, um, the economy, and not things that create divisions, like trying to figure out who's a Serb and who's a Montenegrin and, and whether in which church they attend. Those things are really uh, efforts to de further destabilize the country. Have you shared these concerns with uh, we, politicians there? We've shared it privately, and this is the first time that I'm sharing it publicly. It's a legally binding obligation. So it's leg legally binding on Serbia, on Kosovo, on the European Union, and because we support the, uh, the dialogue, it's a commitment for us. So yes, it should be implemented. In fact, it will be implemented. So in, I think that the government in Pristina should see that as an opportunity. Uh, there are models in Europe about, uh, that provide um, collective rights for minorities. It already within the European Union. Uh, and if you look at, at this, there is a way to, to create opportunities for both countries. Now, uh, if we don't deal with the question of the association, the, uh, this, 70, 000, this population of 70,000 people living in northern Kosovo uh, is the real challenge. They are at the center of, uh, of all of the tension, of all of the conflict, of all of the confrontations. So we have to look for models and ways that are gonna work for, for them. They are dual citizens. They should be get granted uh, all of the protection of the, uh, of the institutions uh, in Kosovo, but they also should be permitted to participate in the social, political, and economic life of Serbia. So there is an opportunity there. That's why I say that they, are, they should look at it as both of them being European. So if we, if we don't solve this question, we're gonna be in, in a perpetual cycle of crisis. Is there a deadline for the question, for the issue to be solved? As soon as possible, as soon as possible. I mean, I think uh, you know, it, it doesn't help anybody to have a frozen conflict in the region. And this is the only frozen conflict uh, in Central Europe. Now, on the Open Balkans, we've said we support it only under two conditions. One is that it's open to everybody, and it's open to everybody as a full member. Now, one of the challenges of CRM and RCC and others is that they put caveats on Kosovo's uh, membership. There should be none. They should be a full member of all institutions. Uh, so that's one of the things that is interesting, and I think we should test it. We should test uh, President Vuce's commitment to bring Kosovo in as a full member and to recognize their government-issued documents. Um, so that, that's an interesting aspect of the Open Balkans. But if only three or four join initially, what it does is it requires um, the, the difference between a free trade uh, uh, unit and a free smuggling zone is the control of the borders. So that means that they would have to recognize borders between Serbia and Republika Srpska and, um, and uh, between Serbia and Northern Kosovo as international borders regulated by Serbia plus three NATO members. So in, in any way you look at it, there are opportunities for the region to move forward to heal a little bit through the open Balkans if it's properly executed. I think we need to uh, give both sides a reason to hope. I do think that there are a lot of opportunities for engagement. Now, it is true that there is a lack of trust between the two communities, um, but there's also been a, a very serious lack of vision. Um, and by the way, there is no option to a peaceful coexistence between ethnic Albanians and ethnic Serbs in the region. Um, and it is important for them, and it is a sign of maturity that if they will be able to solve uh, their problems peacefully, because if 
uh, I frequently say that what we're trying to do is push the region into a union where they're going to have to live with Norwegians and Czechs and French. And if you can't live with your neighbor, then it's very difficult to, to show Europe that you are capable of being um, part of that community. So there's no option. Uh, and the future of the region is as multi-ethnic democracies. So they have to find a way to bridge the trust. And that's on all leaders. That's on the, the uh, municipal leaders. That's on the central government. But we also have to give them some options, some ideas, some uh, thoughts as to how the relationship between peoples in, in the region are actually a very, very uh, attractive um, aspect of the region. That's why the region is so beautiful, so rich, so culturally vibrant, is because of all of the different ethnicities that inhabit it. So it's a question of creating the peace. And I said, as I've said, the United States has a good relationship with all of the countries. The challenge is they don't have good relationships with each other. So I think we'd like to show more leadership in trying to foster those, uh, that trust.